In case you didn't freaking notice, we're divorced. We're complete strangers now. Enough funny business and leave me alone with my life, goddammit! Funny business? Who? Me? I'm not doing anything like... Ah, you mean her. I showed my ex-husband and his wife a photograph of the woman who he was stalking. He immediately turned a few shades pale. Uh, how the hell do you know about her? Wait, hang on. I think I got the wrong photograph. Let's see here. Ah, here it is. I believe she is the one whom you're having the affair with, eh? I showed him another photograph of a completely different woman. Stop, stop it, please! My name is Rhea, and I'm 28 years old. I work as an assistant at a certain private business office. Recently, I met a man because of my work, and after being together with him for perhaps a year or so, I married him. But this was not my first marriage. To tell you the truth, I was divorced two years ago. My ex-husband, Maurice, was a classmate of mine back in college. We'd known each other pretty much the first day of school, and after a relationship that lasted close to four years, we ended up getting engaged right when we graduated. However, we broke up because he cheated on me. The woman whom he had an affair with was a friend of mine from school. Maurice's betrayal crushed me completely, and I could never forgive him for what he did. Maurice, is it true that you're cheating on me? With a friend of mine on top of that? I can't believe it! Oh, shut the hell up! And so what if I was? Not like you can do much in any case, right? Ever since he was a student, Maurice was pretty popular with the ladies, and yet he still chose me as his girlfriend, and later, as his wife. I trusted him, and he took advantage of that, snatched my heart, ripped it to smithereens, and left me in despair. As a result, Maurice and I got divorced. I unfortunately later developed an instinctive distrust in people in general, and this caused me to lose almost all of my friends. After the whole incident, I didn't depend on anyone, and I was living alone. I took a job at the aforementioned office, where I was basically in charge of the miscellaneous jobs that the regular employees didn't often do. I sometimes had to work during the night and on holidays, but the pay was very good. And it was there that I met my current husband, Harvey. He is one year younger than me, and in the beginning, when we met, he was apparently drawn to my focus and my seriousness. But after a while, Harvey realized that I had a wall, shutting other people out without any exceptions. He says he couldn't help but wonder what it was that made me so untouchable. This fascination about my obligatory distance from everybody eventually blossomed into something much more passionate, and he soon realized that he had completely fallen in love with me. I on the other hand, couldn't be so relaxed and easygoing with him. Although he is a year younger than me, Harvey is still the son of the president of the office that employed me. All the staff in the office are all so friendly, it's sometimes incomprehensible, and it's like each and every member of the staff is family to each other. But, because I was still traumatized because of Maurice's betrayal, I found it psychologically impossible to engage in communal socializing that served no apparent purpose. Still, Harvey was extremely patient with me, and thanks to his patience, as well as his kindness, the walls of darkness that had been enveloped me gradually disintegrated, and for the first time in what seemed like forever, I could feel happy with other people again. I found myself attracted to Harvey's sincerity. Even when I confided in him and told him everything, all he did was listen intently, and when I was done, gently squeezed my shoulders and brought me in close. That was how our love for each other was born, and over time, it bloomed so beautifully. We got engaged after a 14-month relationship, and soon thereafter, we were husband and wife. As my husband, Harvey loves me, my checkered past as a divorce wife included, and I had begun to lead a happy life. We moved into a nice apartment right after we got married. The flat was close to work. By then, we'd found out I was pregnant and my husband thought about my health before everything else. This is a beautiful room, honey. It honestly feels like it'd be too big. It's gonna feel a lot smaller once we have that angle biter of ours. And it's very close to work, so in the event something happens, I'll be able to get there very quickly. I was texting my close friends and relatives about what my new address was, 
but as I was doing so, the thought of my estranged friend who had helped me with the whole fiasco with Maurice. During my divorce from two years ago, Anastasia was a common friend of my ex-husband's, the woman whom he had an affair with, and me myself. I had consulted with her about what I should do with the situation. She was very kind to me, and was always there to help whenever I wanted to fix all these problems. Anastasia was also the individual who had told me about my ex-husband's affair in the first place. She told me, I'm on your side, Rhea. Remember that. Maurice, who had an affair with that stupid bitch, is a frickin' dickhead. He should never be forgiven, and he should pay for the pain he caused you. Needless to say, her words helped me out a huge deal. During the period of the legal proceedings, until Maurice and I divorce, I often consulted Anastasia, and that experience had made us very close friends. Rhea, you know you can't keep associating with these traitors. But, but, I just can't forgive them, damn it. I want to make them pay for what they did. I like your spirit, but, unfortunately, not many people want to see a vengeful Rhea Donovan, myself included. Trust me, honey, you've got to cut them out of your life. People like that were never your friends, and it would be unwise to waste any more time on them. Cut them loose, and move on, honey. Anastasia was absolutely right. I wasted no more time, and Maurice and I divorced right away. She then recommended that I should change my environment by moving to a city far away. That's what I did next. On the day we said our goodbyes, she left me with these words. I know you all too well, Rhea, and I know you're gonna be fine. You'll definitely bounce back from this. It's best if you left all hints of your dark past behind, including all people whom you'd had relations with, including me too. I hugged her tight, offered my deepest gratitude to her in the form of tears unstoppable, and we parted ways. That's how it was after the divorce, heeding to my best friend's advice. I stopped associating with all my friends from before that depressing time, but now... I felt like we could talk about those days as nothing but the distant past. I had no idea if she would still use the same email address as she did back then when we were talking, but I sent her the address of my new house anyway. The next week, my doorbell rang. I looked through the peephole, and I discovered a young police officer standing outside. I cracked open the door. Good afternoon, officer. What can I do for you? Good afternoon, ma'am. Apologies for barging in on such short notice. I've actually come to investigate a report that's been filed against you. I'd like to ask you a few questions, ma'am, if you don't mind. What was the report about? I let the officer inside, sat him down on a chair, offered him a cup of coffee and some apple crumble, and sat myself down with a cup of tea. As I did so, I explained my situation to Harvey via text messages. He replied saying he'd be home very soon. Thank goodness. This was creeping me out a bit. If the officer, who is called Officer McDougal, wasn't so kind and friendly, I would have definitely had a panic attack. We received a call from a certain male individual that informed us you were stalking him. Do you have any idea what that could be about? When it came to any ideas, I have to admit I had a few because of work. Oh my, a stalker? May I ask who filed the report? Unfortunately, you don't have clearance for that yet, ma'am. I'm sorry. Pardon me, officer, but I actually work for a detective agency, so I believe... I was just starting to explain that to Officer McDougal, I could hear my husband's voice. He sounded like he was conversing with another officer. Harvey had apparently sprinted back to our place, and I could hear him wheezing, as though he had asthma. <sighs> my wife is pregnant, and uh, can't be bothered too much. Uh, please, allow me to assist. I promise uh, I'll cooperate. Uh, uh. Officer McDougal allowed him inside, and as the door opened, Harvey strode in, his suit drenched with sweat. Never had I ever been so relieved to see him. We proceeded to answer a few questions from Officer McDougal, and it didn't take long before the case was acknowledged a simple misunderstanding. I was initially afraid that one of the people I was investigating for Harvey's agency had found out I was talking to them. I thought my identity had been revealed, and that they had filed a report for stalking. Making a mistake in my line of work could cause one a lot of damage to their integrity. 
you see, and keeping your head down was paramount above all else. But once I found out it had nothing to do with work, and that it turned out to be a mere false accusation, I was relieved. And there were several reasons why it was a misunderstanding. The report stated that the stalking had been going on for six months. We moved into our apartment just this month. Additionally, most of those subject to my investigations were women, and as Officer McDougall mentioned, the report came from a man. The police officers deemed the report itself not credible. Before they left, Officer McDougall told us, The man who filed the report claimed that the woman who is stalking him is his ex-wife, who appears to be still hung up on him. Strange is an understatement, I must say. Just be careful, ma'am. Sir, make sure to take care of yourself and your wife. Apologies for barging in and thank you very much for your time and cooperation. Good day. It turned out I was going to have to deal with the nightmares of the admissile pass that I had tried to forget for so damn long. <sighs> Looks like someone's trying to bring you down to what they believe is justice. But don't worry, honey. I'll protect you. Harvey brought me in close, and my heart plunged into a deep sense of joy and security. Three days later, I heard from my ex-husband, Maurice. I know you're the one who's freaking stalking me, Rhea. Cut it the freak out, you're bothering me. That was the very first thing he said to me when I answered the phone. What load of horseshit are you speaking now? I would never do something like that. My wife? She's freaking upset, you know? She had quite a fit yesterday and she said she was going to the police. I'm dead serious here. The police? That's right. And there you have it. Scared out of your pants yet, eh? Apologize now. Why do I have to apologize for something I didn't do? I actually think you're the one who has to get down on your knees and apologize to me. I let my emotions get the better of me, and I yelled back into my phone in a pure fury. Maurice's arrogance seemed to have died down for a split second, perhaps intimidated by my aggressiveness. He went on, slurring his words. Anyway, I know that you're the one. If you apologize to my wife and promise that you'll stop stalking me, then everything will come to a peaceful close. How about that, Rhea? I tried my damnedest to calm my anger at Maurice's stupid response. Such a raw negative emotion. It's not good for the baby. After I had cooled down a bit, I remembered that what Officer McDougall had said a few days prior. Come to think of it, the one who reported the stalker must have been Maurice's current wife. I wonder what kind of woman she was. I couldn't believe she would willingly take this guy's story seriously. Wait a minute, honey. Calm down. I'll do the talking. On the other end of the phone. Put me on the goddamn phone. I heard a woman's voice. The familiarity of that voice immediately caused a terrible sensation throughout my entire body, as though someone had doused me with ice-cold water. The woman, who snatched the phone from Maurice, calmly said, Hello, Rhea. It's been a long time. I wonder if you remember me. Anastasia. Why, what are you... Surprised? <laughs> yep, you guessed right, dear. Maurice and I got married. I'm very happy with him now. Married? Maurice? Impossible! Anastasia, the very same person who was so kind to me when I was hurting over the betrayal of Maurice, now she had stabbed me in the back too. Maurice and I were supposed to be together from the beginning, you know. And then you got in the frickin' way. From the beginning? What do you mean? We were dating before you married him, you see, and we were very happy together. We were very much in love, but I had a brief fling with another man, and then you frickin' saw your opportunity to steal him from me, and then you really went and took my Maurice away from me. Anastasia's self-centeredness rendered me completely clueless as to what I was currently witnessing. Wait, hold on. The reason I believe was why I divorced him later on. Don't tell me. The girl you thought was having an affair with Maurice? The girl that I told you was having an affair with him? She literally had nothing to do with it whatsoever. You really are so stupid to be easily deceived. So it was all a lie, wasn't it? I can't believe this. When I was consoling you, I was trying so hard to hold back my laughter, you know. You may recall I was crying along with you when you were, but those were just eye drops. Why did you go through all that trouble? 
If you liked Maurice, couldn't you have just said so? There was absolutely no reason for you to stab me in the back like that. I never liked you to begin with. Your straightforward way to thinking, the way you're easily flattered by men. But I can't believe that you'd fallen so far away from Sandy as to become a stalker. You've always been so funny, honey. I'll give you that. Anastasia's sudden appearance made me forget all about why Maurice had called me in the first place. I have to inform her that the stalker accusation was a complete misunderstanding. Yeah, about that. I'm not stalking you or Maurice. Playing dumb with me isn't gonna work, darling. I'm gonna get proof that you're completely guilty. Just watch me. I freaking dare you. Anastasia hung up the phone with that as a parting shot. When my husband came home, I told him the contents of the phone call with Maurice and Anastasia. As a matter of fact, I'd recorded every single thing that was said between us. I showed Harvey the recording, and he listened to the conversation intently. My husband's face became increasingly red, and his body tensed up. He then exclaimed in a loud voice that reeked frustrated fury, What the hell is wrong with these people? They ganged up on you and forced you to divorce that damn bastard. Freaking disgusting. But I smiled at him and said, No, 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 honey. On the contrary, I'm glad we got divorced. I was able to meet you, and we're going to have this baby soon. I rubbed my swollen belly. I felt a gentle kick, and the sensation almost made me cry tears of joy. Rhea, are you alright? It was hard, wasn't it? Finding out that the person who'd helped you cope with your divorce was actually planning something behind your back. I mean, sort of. I can't believe Anastasia betrayed me too. I'm still shell-shocked, and really sad that such a thing happened. But the fact remains, I'm very happy now, here with you. I decided to think of that phone call as a valuable learning experience. That the past, even if you've forgotten all about it, can still be resurrected and affect the present. The key is to never let it go out of control. Rhea, you're getting so much stronger. Ah, oh, yeah, that woman. What was her name? Was it Anastasia? According to Harvey, just the other day, a woman by the name of Anastasia had hired the agency to investigate a potential stalker. He also said the investigation had brought something interesting to the spotlight. Suddenly, Harvey and I shared a very sinister grin and was began to giggle. So that's what been happening, eh? Well then, I do believe the near future is going to be very interesting. Wouldn't you agree, Holmes? Harvey was rubbing his hands, his wide grin frankly terrifying. We were both loving the possibility so much, because in that moment, we knew that poor old Anastasia and her husband would meet the devil himself in the fiery depths of hell. One week passed. One day, Anastasia called me out of the blue. It was apparently because she wanted to show me evidence against my being a stalker. I'm going to turn you into the police, bitch. You're going to jail. You're going to prison, damn you. My, my. You seem pretty enthusiastic. Got the proof, did you? You bet your stupid ass I did. Prepare for the end of your life, because things are about to get good. We decided to meet at a nice family restaurant. I arrived at the restaurant at the appointed time. Anastasia and Maurice were there, waiting for me with their arms crossed. Both of them were wearing fancy branded clothing and expensive accessories. Anastasia brushed her long hair languidly back as she eyed me with a cocky smirk. Maurice frankly looked pretty sulky and adamantly refused to make eye contact with me. He just looked at his expensive watch. I recognized it as Omega Speedmaster Professional. My uncle collected watches, you see, and he had quite the captivating selection. Maurice seemed to have a good handle on his money, but both he and his Barbie doll of a wife had a vulgar air about them. To keep my slightly swollen pregnant belly out of sight, I wore a plain cotton, fluffy one-piece dress, my hair up in an updo. Right off the bat, Anastasia made it clear she didn't like my nonchalant attitude. Her red lips twitched, as though she struggled to stifle a laugh. Oh my, you've gained weight, darling. I smile back at that cocky Anastasia, and calmly retort, I'm pregnant. And there we go, her face a shade paler than what it was, and all scrunched up. Looks like I drew first blood. Perhaps Anastasia misunderstood something very stupid, because she started to glare at Maurice. You've got to be kidding me. 
No, honey, no, no, that ain't my damn kid. I just lost it at that point. I burst out laughing. I showed the two idiots the mother-child handbook. It had my name and my husband's on it. Here, have a look at this. I'm married again. I have nothing to do with that stupid man next to you, Anastasia. That woman had a bitter look on her face for a brief instant, but soon after, she went back to smirking. Damn, this just gets better and better. You've been stalking Maurice even though you're married? I wonder if your new husband knows about this. Ah, my husband? Well, he is here too. Allow me to introduce him. I motioned to Harvey, who was sitting at the table next to ours. He sat down next to us and greeted them both. Nice to meet you. I believe I owe the two of you a good deal of goddamn gratitude for taking care of my lovely wife, Rhea, a few years ago. They were already wide-eyed when I signaled Harvey to join us, and by now, they were leaving their mouths hanging open in puzzled confusion. They literally looked like a pair of dead codfishes. I could tell that Anastasia was slowly beginning to realize that none of her attacks were having any effect on me. She was getting increasingly impatient. Your wife is bothering us, you see. My husband is being stalked by her. She's refusing to let him go, even though the past is the past, and there's nothing she can do to bring back those happy times she spent with him. That's right. In case you didn't freaking notice, Rhea, we're divorced. We're complete strangers now. Enough funny business and leave me alone with my life, goddammit! And we have the evidence right here. A detective from an agency is going to be here soon with a photograph of Marisa's stalker. Of you, in other words. Start the countdown before you're freaking under arrest. Wait, what? D detective Maurice apparently didn't know Anastasia had hired a detective. If he had, I'm sure he would have done anything in his power to stop it. Yes, I hired a detective, honey. This poor little immature girl here is still hung up on her ex-husband and would do anything to get him back. Well, tonight, that ends. You're so pathetic. I took a few photographs from the envelope that Harvey had brought. Funny business? Who? Me? I'm not doing anything like... Ah, you mean her? I showed my ex-husband and his wife a photograph of the woman he was stalking. He immediately turned a few shades pale. How the, how the hell do you know about her? Wait, hang on. I think I got the wrong photograph. Let's see here. Ah, here it is. I believe she is the one whom you're having an affair with, eh? I showed him another photograph of a completely different woman. It showed a snapshot of Maurice coming out of a love hotel with her, her clutching his arm. Oh god, stop it, please! Anastasia had a blank look on her face. She didn't seem to have a single clue about what was going on. You hired our detective agency to take photographic evidence of your husband's stalker. Well, we have, madam, and we believe we did a very good job. And here they are, right in front of you. Undeniable, legitimate, conclusive. Your detective agency? Yes, our detective agency. Oh yeah, that's right. In return for all the help you've given me in the past, my husband personally volunteered to look into all of Mr. Geta's other lovers. This won't cost you anything extra, I assure you. It was the least Harvey here could do. Yes, indeed. You may also consider it my token of good luck with the rest of your lives. I'm sure you two will live a very happy life together. Please, no need to thank me. Helping people is its own reward. Anastasia looked at the photos one after the other. Her face turned into shades of many colors, some of which I never even knew were anatomically possible. Her face turned red, then blue, then white, then gray, then red again. It was obvious everything we were saying to her was going in from one ear and out the other. Maurice was starting to shake and tremble uncontrollably. I thought it was about time for me to go. I left the rest to my very capable husband and left the restaurant secure in my own safety as well as my baby's. As I pushed the entrance door open, I could hear Anastasia's screeching voice behind me. I wanted to see the chaos, but I decided against it, too, because I was sure it could put the safety of my baby in jeopardy. I found out later that 
It had all started when I sent Anastasia my home address. Maurice continued to be unfaithful, even after he married her. But since her family had a lot of money and was living in a nice, luxurious life, he tried very hard to keep his affairs a secret. But then, one of Maurice's girlfriends started stalking him. The mailbox at his home were sometimes filled with harassing letters, and sometimes the phones would ring, only to be silent when someone answered it. All these things put together evidently meant that Anastasia would eventually find out about it, and that's exactly what happened. Maurice had an idea of who it was, but he didn't want Alkim to find out about the affair. That's why he feigned ignorance on who it could be, and thought of other ways to deceive Anastasia into believing he had no idea who the culprit was. And because Anastasia had told him I was living in the general area as them right around when Maurice initially filed a report against me, he went on trying to frame me as the culprit. Two years ago, Anastasia had manipulated me, advising me that I ran away without a fight. And that's exactly what I did. But now that I think about it all, she ever did was convince me to give up. And as a result, I abandoned hope without ever investigating the affair. I didn't even file demands for alimony. But now, I'm not the same person I used to be. I also knew that the statute of limitations for filing for alimony hadn't passed yet. This time, I properly demanded alimony from Maurice, who had an affair, and I also demanded some from Anastasia, who was the real woman whom he was cheating on me with. In addition to that, I also filed demands for compensation for alleged defamation and for being falsely accused of being a stalker. Because Anastasia was living her life drowning in her parents' money, spending lavishly on pointless artifacts alongside Maurice, in exchange for shouldering the alimony for the two of them, her parents cut ties with them soon thereafter. Her parents introduced them to a factory they knew, and as of now, both of them are working physical jobs, continuing to pay her debts to their parents through payroll deductions. They blame each other for the hell that had frozen over for them, and apparently the fights know no end. As for me, after all these damn shenanigans, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. My husband's detective agency is doing well. My life has never, I repeat, never been as glorious. I hope to continue supporting my darling husband at home, do well in raising my son, and do my best in creating a nice, healthy, happy family.